100,000 pounds of iron. The Vulcan, at 56 feet tall, is the largest cast iron statue in the world. As the god of iron and fire watches over Birmingham, he holds a hammer in his left hand, an important tool of the iron trade in 1904. And he's admiring his spear that he just crafted himself. Clearly, in 1904, iron workers were really humble people. To really understand how and even why this statue was created, I mean, it's just incredibly large and incredibly expensive. To understand how Alabama was able to create something like this, we're going to have to go back in time to the Civil War. In the Civil War, Alabama was part of the Confederacy, and as the Confederates searched for sources of metal for their guns and for their ammunition, they realized just how rich the ground is with iron deposits and coal deposits and limestone and a lot of other valuable minerals. There's a lot of iron sitting right underneath Birmingham and they needed to be able to mine it. But the Confederacy wasn't very economically stable. They weren't able to get the funds to do anything. But once the Union took over and the Confederates fell, they were really able to start pumping this iron ore to the surface. And as they pumped it up, the growing uh, railroad industry followed all the money to Birmingham. That's why we have so many railroads. I probably crossed over 35 railroads trying to get here today because there's just so much railroad. The, the Birmingham, Alabama wasn't just satisfied with pumping the money out to the rest of the country either. They wanted the money flowing into themselves. So they built their own factories. They built their own their own foundries and their own uh, blast furnaces, which was very re new technology at the time. And they built their own railroads. Pretty soon they were building all this stuff for very inexpensive because they were able to make their own railroad ties with the iron that they were pumping to the surface. They weren't having to ship materials from anywhere else. So Birmingham became pretty wealthy and pretty soon a lot of major companies were centered right here in Birmingham. It was nicknamed the Steel City. A lot of companies with mining, most of the major mining companies actually for iron and steel, a lot of steel foundries were centered here and many major transportation companies were even centered in Birmingham. They were able to utilize the workforce of all the ex-slaves in the area and all the white Americans just searching for work. And this was in 1904, a time when segregation was so heavy and a lot of the mines were segregated but some of them weren't. They even had some convict relief systems to where criminals could work in the mines instead of staying in prison and get time off. After a while, the city became known as the Steel City. And the Vulcan behind me, it was created not just as some cocky symbol that we were just great at building things, but as an emblem to all the workers who got us here. There's a lot of history melted into that iron history of the Civil War, of racial integration, of the workplace, the free market, history of the railroads, a history of Birmingham. When the Vulcan looks over the Steel City, I think he still sees how far we came, and he still sees the Steel City of 1904. Thanks for watching.